Simply put, minimalist travel is traveling with less stuff, but it can also mean being more conscious about how you spend your time and money on the road. Today, I am sharing minimalist travel tips, not only for packing, but also tips for simplifying your life on the road. For example, how to apply the minimalist mentality to other aspects of travel, like travel planning, destinations, and activities. I'll also share five vital tips for minimalist packing and some of the unexpected outcomes and lessons for me from this new way of looking at life. Let's do this. First off, let's debunk the number one myth about minimalism. And that myth is that minimalism involves sacrifice. It doesn't or it doesn't need to if you do it right. And I will, of course, share some tips on how to do it right. Minimalist living does not need to mean that you're sacrificing personal comforts or the things that you want. In fact, if anything, you'll find that most minimalist travelers and people who live the minimalist lifestyle say that they feel liberated by minimalism because it means they need to make fewer choices. Speaking of choice, I wanna share a story with you about a good friend of mine, Matt Bowles. He's also a full-time digital nomad. He's been on the road for 10 years, traveling with carry-on luggage only. He calls himself a stylish minimalist. Why? Because he makes very strategic choices about what he travels and lives with. And despite traveling with carry-on luggage only, he manages to fit into his luggage the following very unpredictable items. A three-piece suit, including dress shoes, a podcasting studio, a wine aerator, and an espresso maker and coffee grinder. In fact, in another episode, Matt and I compare our portable espresso makers. I'll drop a link to that in the description. Matt does a lot of talks about stylish minimalism and about traveling full-time with carry-on luggage only. He also commonly gets objections from people who say that they must bring this one thing or that other thing as an excuse for not being able to travel ultralight. For example, he's regularly been approached by women who say, oh, well, you're a man, so you don't need things like a hairdryer, so it's easy for you to travel ultralight. His response, do you need a podcasting studio or an espresso maker? If they say no, then he replies, great, just put the hairdryer where the podcasting studio would go. See, in my opinion, minimalism is largely about choice and making the right choices for you, depending on your priorities. But there are, of course, some specific strategies and minimalist travel tips that you can apply to live well on the road without making sacrifices. We will get to those in a minute. But first, I wanna zoom out a little bit because a lot of people think of minimalist travel as being only about luggage size. And I think the minimalist mentality and minimalist living applies to much more than just the things we own. For example, let's talk about minimalism as it applies to travel planning. I am a firm believer of less is more, and this applies very specifically to destinations. When I was in Japan a few years ago, I was house sitting outside of Tokyo for a couple of months. People knew, who knew that I was in the country asked me if I would be visiting Kyoto. When I said no, they were surprised and even a little disappointed. Some locals were downright offended. This happens all the time for me. Here's the problem. If I had said yes, that I would also be visiting Kyoto, then the next question would be, am I also visiting Osaka and Hiroshima and Mount Fuji and some of the islands? And all of these places are absolute must-sees if you visit Japan. But then why stop there? As long as I'm in the area, I should also see South Korea because it's so close. So where is the line? What would have been enough? I could be in Japan for years and I would still never satisfy everybody's idea of what I should and shouldn't be doing. So instead, with a minimalist approach, I decided to focus my time in and around Tokyo and Tokyo alone. I spent two months in Tokyo and I feel like I had a really special experience there. It was way more culturally immersive than if I had just flitted around the country doing all the things. I also saved a bunch of money by staying in one place and it was a little environmentally more friendly because I wasn't uh, traveling long distance as much. I can always return to Japan and see more at another time. So. How does this apply to you? Well, I believe it doesn't matter how long you're traveling. It could be a week or a month or a year. My advice is to resist the temptation to plan too much or to try to do too many things. By taking a minimalist approach to travel planning and allowing your trip to evolve more organically while you're there, you may find that you'll have a deeper and more special experience. Here's another way to apply minimalism to your travels without sacrificing the experience. I'm gonna tell you the story of Taco Tuesday. It was a Tuesday night when myself and a bunch of travelers decided to go out for Taco Tuesday at a local restaurant that had a special on for cheap beer and tacos. John and Wendy decided that cheap beer was more appealing than cheap tacos. And so they engineered their budget for the night to partake of the beer and they prepared their own full dinner at their accommodation prior to going out. 
Dave and Angie, being well-seasoned travelers, chose to fill up on some homemade appetizers prior to going out, and they each nursed one beer and a taco or two. Julie was super broke, but she wanted to hang out with us, so she just ordered a Coke. Wayne, who had gads of money, still flew under the radar with one beer and two tacos. And then there was Phil. Poor Phil. Phil loved a good party, but he did not have a lot of money. This didn't seem to stop him from indulging though. He managed to order seven tacos and four beers. And not even the beers on special, he ordered premium beers. Phil's tab ended up being more than everybody else's tab combined. Here's the rub. The amount of money that people spent on this night was in no way correlated to how much fun each person had. Everybody laughed, they shared stories, they enjoyed a leisurely walk around along the ocean to and from the bar, and we all came away with great memories. If anything, Phil seemed the least enthused about the night, having spent much of the walk home doing the math about how many hours he'd have to work to pay off his credit card. So always remember, everything you do when you travel is a choice. There are no rules. All right, let's get into some minimalist travel tips around packing. By way of introduction, I will share my own story of how I got into minimalist packing very much by accident. When I started traveling full time after I sold everything in Toronto, Canada in 2007, I started traveling with a huge backpack, like the kind you use for backcountry camping. It was completely inappropriate and it was filled with ridiculous things like rock climbing shoes and a harness and get this, a 60 meter rope. <laughs> like it was totally ridiculous. And very quickly, I coined the phrase that you've heard me say before, but I'll say it again because I love it. The weight of your luggage is equally proportionate to your level of misery on the road. As the weeks and months and years went by, I left a trail of detritus behind me as I shed the things that I realized I just didn't need that were quite literally weighing me down. I also got better and smaller luggage. Then I had a chance to leave my main luggage behind and take a three week trip through Europe with carry on luggage only. Now at the time, this felt like a huge challenge but I quickly realized how liberating it was to have a smaller, lighter bag, especially in a place like Europe. At the end of the trip, I realized I could have stayed away for longer with the stuff that I had brought. So I decided to level up and I did a two month trip sailing around the Caribbean with just a backpack. Once again, this felt like a challenge, but by the end, I found myself questioning what it even was that I had in my main bag because I realized I could travel indefinitely with what I had. So I leveled up again and I took off to Panama for a three month house sitting gig while leaving my main bag behind on the Caribbean island of Grenada. My life took a peculiar turn while I was in Panama and I actually never ended up returning to Grenada or my luggage. So I inadvertently became a full-time traveler with carry-on luggage only. And I traveled for two more years with that exact luggage. Since then, I mostly travel with carry-on luggage only. However, now that I have a base in Toronto, depending on the trip that I'm taking, I might choose to check a bag. But to be honest, I haven't checked a bag for at least four years. With that, let's get into my top minimalist travel tips. These will help you pack light and live with less without sacrificing style. Tip number one, multi-purpose is key. This applies in a few different ways, but ultimately anything that you pack or anything that you buy needs to serve at least one purpose in order to warrant a place in your bag. When it comes to clothing, items of clothing or shoes that can only be worn on one kind of occasion or in one specific combination with other things you own are not multi-purpose. My recent travel capsule wardrobe that I showed off in my episode about Europe packing tips is an example of a multi-purpose wardrobe. For example, instead of bringing one bulky sweater for colder weather, I am practicing instead the art of layering with my t-shirt, my long sleeve shirt, and another button up layer on top. Altogether, these take up less space and weight than the bulky sweater would, and each layer can be worn on its own or in other combinations to serve multiple climates and scenarios. Remember, multi-purpose travel clothing not only applies to the styles and specific pieces of clothing, but it also applies to your color scheme. Everything needs to match everything else. Toiletries can also be multi-purpose. Dr. Browner's is a great example of a natural concentrated soap that can be used for washing your body, face, hair, even as laundry detergent or dish soap. Likewise, I know some people who use shea butter for moisturizing their face, body, and even their hair. Tip number two, let go of brand loyalty when it comes to consumables. I'll admit this can be a tough one for me. For example, I do like using certain toiletries and supplements. And the problem is if I'm going on a long-term trip where I may not be able to get refills of whatever item I am brand loyal to, it means I need to bring everything with me from the start of the trip. 
which can be problematic in terms of luggage space. Life without brand loyalty is much easier and lighter. And frankly, I quite enjoy searching for refills and alternatives to the products that I'm accustomed to using. I've discovered all kinds of interesting things in foreign countries, and I also think that having a mission to shop for a specific item while abroad is an interesting learning experience and cultural immersion. Tip number three, use electronics that can charge on the same cord. USB-C is becoming the norm for charging phones, laptops, and small electronics. By paying attention to this and specifically choosing and buying electronics that use this cord, you eliminate the need to travel with multiple charging cables. Along the lines of electronics is tip number four, which is to question every electronic you're bringing. For example, do you really need a tablet and an e-reader? Arguably no. If you must have a tablet, it can also serve as an e-reader. But if you have a laptop, you probably don't need a tablet as well, in which case perhaps a smaller and lighter e-reader would be a better choice. Also, unless you are a professional photographer or an amateur one who really likes professional camera equipment, I'd like to suggest that most smartphones these days are capable of doing more than you even need them to. That was my thinking 10 years ago when I got rid of my point and shoot digital camera and I haven't looked back since. Tip number five, get used to washing clothes by hand. If you're traveling with a minimalist travel capsule wardrobe, you may find it easier to just wash your items by hand, one or two at a time, and allow them to air dry overnight, rather than waiting to accumulate enough dirty clothing for a full load of laundry, which, if you're traveling with carry-on luggage only, is virtually impossible anyway. Along those lines, since you're prepared to wash clothes as you go, you can bring less underwear and socks and just get in the habit of washing them in the sink in small batches every couple of days. I'm gonna wrap this up with a few outcomes and lessons that I've learned from personally living a minimalist travel lifestyle for the last couple of decades. First of all, when I started traveling full-time, I surprised myself with the amount of money that I saved when everything fit into my bag. Because I was traveling with everything that I owned, that meant that anything that I wanted to buy had to replace something in my bag. So I had to think really hard about whether or not it was a valuable addition to what I had. And in many cases, it wasn't, so I didn't buy it. This also has an additional benefit of environmental sustainability. I got into a conversation with someone who was questioning the digital nomad lifestyle in terms of its carbon footprint. My response, is that the digital nomad lifestyle could in fact be more environmentally friendly and have a lower carbon footprint than most normal lifestyles. First of all, I wanna protest the idea that digital nomads are always flying, which is indeed not environmentally friendly. But if you travel slowly as a digital nomad and limit the number of times you fly, that's obviously a help. There have been many years in my digital nomad career when I've only flown once or maybe twice a year. The rest of the time I was based in one region and I traveled overland. But also something that nobody talks about is this consumerist piece of the puzzle. Because I can't buy things while I'm on the road unless they replace something that's already in my bag, I just don't buy stuff. And I think when we live in one place, we often don't think about the amount of things we buy and the carbon footprint attached to each of those items. Another really cool thing that has come out of this minimalist travel lifestyle is that whenever I do buy something, it generally has to be really useful. This means most of the things that I buy are everyday items. As something wears out, I would replace it from something in the destination that I was visiting at that time, which means all of these years later, pretty much everything I own is a souvenir from somewhere else. And I enjoy going about every day surrounded by items that remind me of where I've been. In the end, I believe minimalist living is about making conscious choices about everything that you have, do, and buy. And when you're conscious about all the choices that you make, you enjoy these experiences even more. Not because there is sacrifice involved in making the choice, but rather because everything is intentionally curated to raise your quality of life in one way or another. With that curation comes a level of appreciation that I believe is fundamental to our happiness. If you agree, please like this episode and share it with your friends. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I'll see you next time.